Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another BJ and Co video. Today we are delving into some more Civilization V. Um, this is a wonderful like, multiplayer game that has been kicking for many years and uh, I get quite quite a lot of enjoyment out of playing this, uh, especially with groups of friends. So what we want to talk about today guys is just give you some tips and tricks to kind of one-up your friends and help you, help you stay ahead of them. So we're going to walk you through how to do that. So first off, um, one thing to know is when you first settle, um, find a good spot to settle. In order to do that, we have a, another video that will be linked for you that uh, you can see exactly how, kind of what thought process to go through on settling a new, a new city. Secondly, you wanna kind of figure out what your research path is gonna be. I, right off the bat, like to look at what luxuries I've got and make some decisions based on that. So here I have incense as well as the ivory. So because of that, for the incense, I'm going to need plantations, which you can see I need calendar for right here. Um, and then for the ivory, I need trapping, which is the camp. So in my general scheme of things, I'll kind of want to rush towards those two just to help get the luxuries online. As soon as you get those online, your happiness goes up. When your happiness is up, you get golden ages faster. Plus, it also gives you that extra happiness to allow you to settle earlier on because you don't want to make yourself unhappy if you don't need to. So right off the bat, I would be going towards calendar and trapping. And my first choice would probably be pottery. My reasoning behind this is early game, it's great to get a religion going. And in order to do that, you need to generate some faith per turn. You might be able to generate a pantheon uh, by getting lucky and finding a faith rune, or um, you might find a natural wonder that you can settle, things like that, a city-state that's faith-based. But in order to get consistent faith out, it's great to get a shrine. I love going pottery and then building a scout a monument and as soon as the monument's finished the shrine's ready to be built works out quite nicely there so push for a religion that helps you quite a lot so another thing that you want to do guys um when you get your first one i always suggest do the citizen management here you want to open this up because this allows you to pick what tiles your city's working instead of just the defaults um it allows you a little bit more flexibility than what the the ai likes to do for you and one thing you want to do, you want to set it production focused. Usually it defaults to default. Um, set it to production and then lock the tiles you want. So if I did production focused, it would likely select that um, or any of these hills. If I set it production and then select this, it will still be growing, which is perfect. But when it grows, the way it calculates is it kind of calculates down. It does food production, gold science down the tiers. So it calculates the food at the turn rollover. So if it's enough to go to the next turn, you'll get an extra population that will then be placed on the highest production thing, tiles that are possible. And from there, that production will actually be benefited to you on the turn that the um, citizen is generated. If it was say food focused, then it would go to the highest food tile, which you know, say I was working this it would go there and all three of that food this turn would be wasted but I could get to production so always put it production focused if you want food growth every time you get that little notification saying that population has you know increased in this city just pop in here and say oh it's there let's move it there now simple and easy guys all right so as we get a little bit further into the game the next two tips uh come about turn 20 ish depending on what difficulty you're you're dealing with and what you have to deal with for barbarians and such. But the, the first one is save yourself some production time and some gold. Um, you know, a worker right now early on is six turns. That's quite substantial. I could have a granary in that time or 220 gold. It's one of almost the most expensive things here besides a settler. Um, so instead of having to build it or buy it, why not just take it? You can see we've got a nice little city state here. We'll just move my pathfinder in declare war we've got them now if you don't do anything else you will take damage at the end of this turn but if we just click on here and we make peace right away 
done. They won't attack us. We have a free worker. It's wonderful. Um, now, the one thing is, is down the line, you don't necessarily want these workers being stolen because it's an easy 45 influence for the opponents if they are able to steal it and return it to the city-state. But for you, it's a free worker. See, I've got, uh, probably got a, ha, ah, see, I've got a second worker I can steal next turn too, which is awesome. So steal workers when you can, walk them back. You know, that is just 12 turns of building I just saved or 440 gold. That's huge early game, guys. Huge. Get you a nice leg up on everybody. Now, secondly, in terms of getting experience, you'll notice around town, we've got some barbarians coming in. Now, with the barbarians, um, I've been whittling them down with the city shots. But now right here, I don't want to city shot the hand axe uh, because I will get no experience from that. I've got this archer here. If I just hit it, I will get uh, two experience for the kill with the archer instead of zero. So it's an easy way to keep an archer in your city, let the city take the city shots down, you know, and then hit them with the archer to get that final kill and get the experience from it. Totally worth it, guys. So another tip relating to uh, farming experience is relating to barb camps. So you can see we've got a barb camp here, we've got a couple archers, some of my pathfinders around, and you know, clearing the camps can be good because you do get city-state influence. But one thing you can do is kind of attack the camp and farm it for experience. And the reason you want to do this is as your units get experience, um, you can just mouse over this bar here, 0 out of 10 for level 1. I've got the guy 1 that's up at 4 now because he got 2 kills. And, you know, as that goes up, you get to select promotions, which can be a huge benefit for your um, units. And if you're fighting with the same units against your opponents, and yours have promotions and theirs don't, you'll definitely have a leg up on the competition. So, in order to do this, what you want to do is you don't want to kill the unit with a melee. So, you know, I'll hit with a Pathfinder. And we'll hit with my other Pathfinder. And you can see, you know, that melee attack gave me five experience. So the melee attacks get you more experience. Um, but the ranged... You need the ranged in order to get the kills. So we'll see here. I can't quite kill it, so I'm not going to this turn. Uh, I'm just going to do nothing. We'll go on to our next turn. No harm. Silly AI. Worried about us. Because <laughs> we're going to kill you so bad. Um, so we'll see. He'll regain a bit of health. We'll hit him a couple more times. And then we'll clear him out. So... Come on, we done? Yeah, so we'll do one here. And then we'll get the kill. And there we go, the camp's empty. Now we could clear it with a melee unit, get some gold from it, it's like 16 gold. Not worth it. We'll just leave it sit here, and in a couple turns there'll be another barbarian that will spawn on there and we can keep damaging it and get more experience. So that tip is farm for experience. And then um, if you're going to raise a building down the line, if you're, you've taken over something and it's not worth it, or even if your building is going to, you know, somebody's going to take over one of your cities, one thing you can do is, you know, make it a little less useful for them or get a little bit of gold if you're raising it. And that's by selling. So you can just click a building and you'll receive six gold and it'll save one gold per turn by if I sell it right now. So, again, you don't want to do this unless you're, it's a building you're raising and then you can get gold out of, the, out of it before it gets destroyed. Or if somebody's going to take it over, you can make it useful, useless for them, if I could talk today. And then our final tip, guys, and this one I can't stress enough, is use the demographics. This is a wonderful tool to see what's going on around you and let you gauge what you need to focus on. So taking a look at things here, um, I don't like this. In my soldiers, this is how big the armies are, right? I have the lowest army as Sushani. I'm eighth. Um, high, there's not a huge gap between them right now, which is good, but I would be concerned if this was Washington. Then I would know that my close neighbor has a big army. I should be building up an army, right? Or different things like, oh, he's really high in tech compared to me. You know, it lets you see where your biggest threats are and who you should be focusing on dealing with first or partnering up with, that sort of thing. So use the demographics. 
But that's it, guys. That's our tips and tricks for Civ to hopefully improve your game a little bit. Um, if you found these useful, I'd love to hear that. Uh, throw us a comment down below saying it was helpful. Um, also, if you have tips and tricks that you'd like to share, throw them down in the comments below and we can add them to our next video and share them with the world so that they can help improve because that's what we want. We want you guys to improve as better gamers. Um, if you want to see more videos like this or any of our other content, Terraria, Destiny, all that fun stuff, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's a link right above. And you can check us out on your favorite social media, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Tumblr, all that fun stuff. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and we'll see you all next time.